Now the last exercise is about tail calls. So we've discussed in the previous exercise the excessive memory usage of a recursive function. And now we're going to see how a recursive function can avoid that. And for this we use the property of a tail call. A tail call happens whenever the last instruction of a subroutine, so then the last thing you do before you return, is a call to a different subroutine. So for a recursive function, the last thing you do is call is do the recursive step, is call yourself, then you can talk about tail recursion. And well, we're going to see that we can take advantage of this to reduce memory usage. So um, first thing in this exercise is to notice that this is not a tail call. Um, in exercise four, it might look like the last thing we do is calculate factorial with n minus one, but that's not the last thing we do. The last thing we do is multiply the result with n. So we have to actually use this result of this function. And we have to actually use that and multiply that with the current parameter value. So as you can already see, if you look at this factorial code, I remember from last time, so factorial n minus one will be returned into a zero, which means n has to be backed up on the stack somewhere because it's also an a zero. So um, as the last step of this function, you're going to need to get n from the stack and multiply that with factorial n minus one. So that's not a tail call. It's not the last, the last thing of this function is not factorial n minus one. Now, in the code that we've provided here in this exercise five, part two, we have rewritten our factorial function to make use of a tail call. So this line three here is a tail call. The last thing this function does, subroutine does, before returning is executing a different function. The very, very last thing it does before returning is executing a different function. Now, that means the consequence of this is that we do not need to use this return value and combine it with something else. We do not do, need to do math with the return value. We can just simply return it. Um, and it also means once we found the return value here, we can discard our parameters. We can, we, we can discard anything that the function needs, any registers. We don't care about it anymore. We're done. After this function call, we're done. It's not the case in, in the other factorial implementation right here. After our factorial call is done, we still need our old values of a zero. So we still need to restore them from the stack. So we still need our stack. But if the last thing you do is call a different function, but you don't do anything with the result, then this function has no more purpose and returning into this function would be pointless because all returning into this function will do is cause another return and another return and another return and a bunch of returns following each other. Why not skip all of those returns? Why not simply say this tail call doesn't need to return? So what we're going to do is, in this case, factorial is going to call the factorial tail, yes? But instead of implementing this tail call as a regular function call, we're simply going to modify a0 modify a1 right here and jump back to the tail function. So instead of doing an actual function call, thereby changing return addresses, we're simply rewriting this code as a jump to the beginning of the function. So it's almost becoming an iterative function. The only reason we can do this is because we don't care about the result. Well, we do care about it, but, um, this result, once we're done, uh, nothing needs to happen with this result anymore. The return value is in fact um, unimportant here, you, would, you could say. Um, so this was actually been replaced by a simple jump. And um, instead of a function call, meaning that we don't need to increase the stack. We don't need to save anything on the stack. We don't need to save anything on the stack because once we return, we don't need anything from the stack, right? The only thing we care about is that once we are done 
with the deepest level of recursion that we can exit this chain. Once we're done with the deepest level of recursion, all that would normally happen is return the end value all the way. So we would get a return value on the stack, return, new return value, return. Keep on returning until we return back here. We can skip all of those returns because they're just control transfers and we can immediately return back here. So we're going to do, um, instead of each time doing an actual function call, we're just going to make sure that our A always points here to the actual return of the function call here in the, in the helper function factorial. And that once we, once we are done with the deepest level of recursion, we can just return out of the function, uh, back to the factorial function. So let's look at this in assembly level, hopefully to make it a little bit more clear. Um, when we go look at our tail recursive implementation, first we have this helper function. This is a normal function. It's not even a recursive function. So we follow the normal regular rules. We've load, um, so we have to call factorial tail with n as in a0 and a1 the value 1. So we load the value a1 value 1. The value n is already in a0 because of here. So um, all we then need to do is backup the return address on the stack, right? Because we're going to modify the return address, the return address in main. So we have to back it up on the stack. Then we can call the tail, fun tail recursive function. And then we can restore our return address and restore our stack. This is a simple function call. You should understand this by now. Um, but then we go into the tail recursive function. Again, we have our recursive function. So the first part of this function checks if n is smaller than two. If n is smaller than two, then we can, that means n is one and we can return the results. So we are done. Um, now in this function, we don't return one, we return result. Because we're going to, the way we rewrote this function is that the second parameter will in the end always have our result value. Our intermediate results and at the deepest level of recursion, the second parameter will have our actual results. So once we reach the deepest level of recursion and equal to one, we can return the second parameter. And we can immediately return that back here to factorial. There is no need to go return this result through all of this recursive steps. Now executing red will simply return to the value in RA. And as long as RA hasn't been overwritten, then RA will still be pointing right here to the last factorial tail call. So it will return in the function factorial. This is the time we overwrite RA. And in the recursive step, this is where we normally call a function and which we will do now as well. Instead of actually calling the function, we will simply use a regular jump instruction. So we'll do our thing. We will do our tail call, um, but we will use a regular jump. So first we put an a zero n minus one, or well, first we put an a one n times result. result is an a one n is an a zero. So a zero times a one, we store that in a one. To, to be able to do n times result as a second parameter. That's what we have to do. n times result as a second parameter. And then we prepare the first parameter by subtracting one. It, talk, it currently holds the value n. We want it to have n minus one. So we subtract one. And traditionally, we would use jump and link here to do the function call. But because this is a tail recursive call, we don't need to do jump and link. We can simply use a regular jump. If we do a regular jump, the control also transfers to this function. The difference is that we don't overwrite the return address. We make sure the return address is still pointing right here to the end of the factorial tail call. So in the factorial function, in the helper function. That means that once we are done, so this will loop and loop and loop as long as we have n smaller than two. So we'll keep looping. And at one point we've reached the deepest level of recursion. And then basically we can return because RA wasn't overwritten. We can simply return back. And 
we didn't need a call stack here. Notice that we avoid the call stack because we don't need to backup RA before calling a function because we don't call a function, we jump. That's all we do. So we don't, didn't need to backup RA here. Um, we didn't need to backup any arguments because we didn't need the arguments anymore after the function call. We don't need to do anything here after the function call. We don't need any argument values. So there is no need to backup anything on the call stack. We haven't used the call stack at all in this tail recursion function. And this perf works perfectly just as well as the other ones. Um, so we have 120 here and we can call it factorial of five. So this is a correct execution. Now, if you have paid attention um, and if you fully understand this, I know this isn't maybe the simplest concept and maybe my explanation is not the most clear one, but if you pay attention, all what this is, is a iterative function now. This is a loop. The code that's running right here is simply a loop, right? You check a value, it's like a for loop. You decrement the value. This is like the loop counter and it's your loop counter here. And uh, every time you are multiplying in every iteration of the loop, you are doing a multiplication, right? And then once n reaches zero, or one, then you're done with your loop and then you just return your result. So actually this factorial function is almost the same as the one from exercise three, where you also simply had a loop where you have a multiplication and then in this case, an addition um, in every iteration. These two now are quite equivalent. The tail call version of factorial and the iterative version of factorial they are for a compiler in terms of memory usage and performance, they should be pretty much the same. Only a very different way of writing the source code. But a compiler, because it can see the stale calls, it can do these types of optimi uh, optimizations. This is not, I would say, um, the most important aspect. It's the most, uh, most complicated aspect of this exercise session, I'd say, but it's not the most important one. Um, much more important that you know how recursive functions work, that they're regular function calls, that you know calling conventions, that you know caller safe, callie safe, all of that. I would consider exercise five a bonus session, a bonus exercise. Tail calls are something of a optimization. We don't need them, but it's pretty much an observation that if the last thing happening in your function is a function call, nothing else is happening with that result, then we can optimize the recursion away and actually the compiler can automatically rewrite this as an iterative function. And then we save on um, all of that memory usage that we normally have for recursions, uh, recursive functions. Hopefully this explanation made somewhat sense.